G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and I love to bury things in the garden. It not only helps the environment by reducing waste and landfill, it saves on buying fertilizer and other expensive additives to improve your soil. So here are seven of the main things I like to bury in the garden. Let's get into it. Number one, animals. As an animal carcass decomposes in the garden, it turns into a rich fertilizer that can be utilized by your plants. The root system of your plants, in this case banana trees, will literally go through and suck out the nutrients it needs. I've buried my fair share of animals in the garden, such as chickens, pigeons, toads, fish heads, and now even a kangaroo. At the end of last year, Nina, my wife, was driving to work early in the morning when out of nowhere hopped a kangaroo right in front of a car. She did everything she could to avoid it, but unfortunately, just like many Australians experience at least once in their life, she hit the kangaroo and it couldn't be revived. Of course, Nina rang me and she was a bit shaken, so I drove out to check that she was okay. And instead of leaving the animal on the road, I took it back home and the only thing I had at the time, which was a reusable supermarket bag, which I never reused after that, I might add. Then I buried the kangaroo in the pet cemetery and it came back to life. No, that part isn't true. I buried the kangaroo right here underneath the banana trees. And since then, we've had a banana boom. Just a few points to note when you do this. Make sure you dig a deep enough hole and cover with enough soil relevant to the size of the animal to prevent any bad smells. And I recommend covering further with a barrier such as boards or rocks to stop wild dogs or other animals trying to dig it up. Also for larger animals, this method works best with fruit trees or large plants like bananas. And of course I'm not saying you should knock off a perfectly healthy animal just to use it in the garden. But if the circumstances arise, such as an old chicken drops off the perch, well you might as well get that one last use out of it. Yes, it is sad when animals get ill or come to a premature end, like young Skippy the kangaroo here. But on a positive note, he did make good bananas. Number two is eggs. As we know, eggs are so versatile. They can be used to make mayonnaise, cakes, pasta, hatched out to make more birds, or simply eaten as is in many different ways. But did you know that eggs also make an excellent fertilizer for plants? It's true. Eggs contain calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, nitrogen, zinc, copper, and many other nutrients beneficial to plant growth. You've probably heard about the benefits of egg shells in the garden, but whole eggs are even better. Except, who wants to waste whole eggs in the garden? Well, firstly, you might find using eggs in this way cheaper than buying commercial fertilizer pound for pound. However, we tend to use eggs that have been soiled, cracked or old. I'll take you in and show you a really good example real time. I left our duck to collect her eggs in the hope that she might sit on them and hatch out some ducklings for us, but she's a little bit young and instead she's collected some of them, but most of them have been scattered around by the chickens and she's not sitting on them. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect them all. They're all around the place. One there, three here, one over there, one there where you are. I'm going to collect them up and use them in the garden. And the last one. Check them out. Look how dirty some of these are. Just rolling around on the coop floor. Gardeners will often dig a hole like this, you know, about oh, 30 centimeters deep. Bung a few eggs in. Break them. and then cover that hole over, nice and good, pat it down, then use a stick so they can identify 
where that hole is for later, then come back in about several weeks, maybe a month or two, and then they know that they can plant a tomato, capsicum, or any vegetable really over the top of that, and they don't even need to use fertilizer. Personally, I just bung them anywhere in the garden. Dig a hole at random, don't even bother marking them. And often, I will just plant tomatoes straight directly over newly seeded eggs into the garden. And I've had good results with that. Number three, animal waste or manures. One of the most common and natural ways to fertilize the garden is by using animal manures that have been left to break down and compost and get really old in a nice cool spot like this under some hessian for several months until they've broken down and then they can be applied into the garden. You can bury fresh manure in the garden, you just can't grow anything in that spot for several weeks, possibly months, until it breaks down. If you get processed commercial manure fertilizer, it's usually sprinkled on the surface around plants. But when we collect our own manures from animals, the material is larger and less concentrated. Often this form of manure is best dug into the garden and combined with the soil, essentially buried into the garden bed, so that it does not clog, burn or crust up, making it better overall for the plants. My favourite manures are cow, horse, poultry, but other farm animals like sheep and even rabbits etc are good too. Cat and dog poop can be composted down, but not buried directly into the garden, on purpose anyway. I'm not a big fan either way of cat and dog waste. It's too close to human waste for me to use in the garden, and I'd be worried about spreading nasty pathogens throughout the veggie patch. But that's just my opinion, whereas farm animals have a vastly different manure consistency because they eat less protein and have a more plant-based diet. Number four is kitchen scraps. You might remember my video, what happens when you bury kitchen scraps in the garden. Well, in this spot here is where the beginning of that video was and where I poured a heap of kitchen scraps in a trench here. And that very season, I grew a bumper crop of tomatoes. So what we should do is dig this up and see if there's anything left of those scraps that I put in there. I'm getting there. I can start seeing some eggshell. Well, that's probably the last thing that would ever break down. No, nah, practically nothing except for a few eggshells. But you have to remember this was buried a good 12 months ago and it's not surprising to me that you won't find any real remnants of anything except for a few calcium pieces of eggshell which are a lot harder to break down. But it gets still utilized by plants, believe it or not. And they only need a little bit micronutrients to boost their own immune system and grow better. Yes, we also compost kitchen scraps in the usual way, in a compost pile or a tumbler, but this cuts out the middleman and I reckon is a fantastic way to do it. Number five is coffee and tea waste. Both coffee and tea are good to use in the garden, either dug in, sprinkled around, or buried completely into the garden bed. Most people know about the benefits of used coffee grounds and whether you use your own or get them from a local cafe, it's all good. Honestly, we use coffee pods and just can't chuck them into the garden. However, we do use tea. Tea leaves have about twice as much nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium than coffee grounds. All these elements are key fertilizer ingredients for plants. Tea also contains calcium, magnesium, iron and zinc which all are good for plants and help them to absorb nutrients. Therefore, burying coffee and tea waste in the garden is worth the effort. But do go easy on the brew in the garden because a little bit is good, but too much in one spot might up the acidity of the soil. And if that happens, that can make it difficult for plants to actually absorb the nutrients. So it has the opposite effect. So I would recommend if you are gonna add coffee grounds and tea leaves into the garden, spread them around a bit. Number six is garden waste. The first instinct of most gardeners is to compost this down. And that is a top way to recycle. 
but green waste like this can also be buried directly into the garden bed. Old plants and even weeds that have not gone to seed can be dug into the ground as a green manure to enrich the soil. I even go one further and bury larger green waste such as sticks and logs to create Hugel culture style raised beds that help to retain moisture and create a healthy environment for beneficial animals, microbes and fungi. Digging in certain plants can even help to eradicate pests. For example, digging in a crop of marigolds can reduce nematodes in the soil. Number seven are worms. Yes, I know that worms are technically an animal and I could have covered them in number one. However, when I put these worms into the garden, they're alive. So I think it's different. I also wanted worms to be last to make this one particularly important point. One of the main reasons I bury all this stuff in our food garden is to feed our worms. I treat our whole garden like it's one big worm farm. And now I'm gonna put these fellows back in so I don't stress them out too much. How do I use these worms in the garden? Well, whenever I find a worm outside of the garden, such as digging around the property, I'll collect them and bury them into the veggie patch. But I've also found another way to grow and add worms, and that's through inoculation. I buy some worm eggs and seed them into a pile of dung for them to hatch out and have a worm party. This does two things. It breaks down and works the manure over to become better plant food. And then when I go to use it in the garden, it populates the beds with extra worms. Now I'm not an expert on worms, thankfully, and I do know that composting worms are often different to the worms that you get in the regular garden. But there is a common belief out there that compost worms won't survive into the regular garden, and that is simply wrong. There are many different types of worms, including different types of composting worms. Composting worms will happily live in the regular garden as long as they have food. And burying things in the garden gives your worms all the food they need for them to turn those items into better soil, structure and nutrients for your plants. You don't have to buy worms. Most of the time, if you have a dung pile that's open or a compost area that's open to the ground, you will attract worms from around your property and they'll multiply in those areas. Although if you do want a head start or if worms are scarce in your area, buying some worms or worm eggs and adding them to your manure, compost pile or garden bed could be worthwhile. Just remember to feed them. One last point about burying things in the garden. Don't overdo it. Don't turn your garden bed into a minefield of decaying matter because that won't do your plants any good as that material breaks down in mass, it creates gases and heat, and that's not helpful for your plant's growth. So throw all your excess waste in here. Besides my top seven, do you bury other things in the garden to make your plants grow better? If you do, whack them down in the comments section below so we can all read and learn from them. And don't say your grandparents. I've heard that one before. If you like this video, make sure you bury that thumb right up and give YouTube the biggest shock of its life as the most liked gardening video ever. Make sure you share it around and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. How you going, Riley?